Good afternoon. Welcome to House Judiciary Committee. And um, we are here. We've um, invited Representative Pat Brennan um, to speak to us about S30. So welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thanks for the opportunity, uh, Committee, to present my ideas today. And uh, I've talked to um, Eric Fitzpatrick about uh, a possible amendment, and I'd like to run it by you guys first. Uh, and I appreciate again the opportunity. Um, in uh, in section two, and I don't have line numbers, I apologize, but it's under um, the the next area of the bill, the next background check. I simply would like to offer an amendment, and I thought uh, very hard about what number to put out there, and I would like to see ten. I realize that's a vast departure from what you proposed. So I have, uh, I will propose 15. Um, I'm in no position to negotiate. I totally understand that. But I think that's um, a reasonable number. Um, and uh, it, it definitely doesn't, it, it puts a slight burden on, uh, on a purchaser, but it's, it's reasonable in my opinion. And it, uh, that's basically what I'm offering. I, I think 30 days might be a little too long and I'm worried about the redundancy and the application process. And should a, should a purchaser forget or not even know how to proceed um, with, and I forget the terminology uh, representative not used, but um, the procedure for reapplying automatically fall through the cracks, then uh, the process starts over. And I, I really do believe 15 days uh, will get the job done. And, and that's my proposal, simple as that. I haven't got anything to put in front of you, but it's simply striking out 30, inserting 15. Thank you. Um, did you have a question? Or I didn't, I, I just wasn't certain uh, when, uh, at first you mentioned a couple numbers. So I wasn't certain which number you had landed on, so. 15, thank you. Yes, thanks. Um, so um, committee, I'm gonna um, you know, propose that we think about it, not, not vote on this um, until tomorrow morning, but I just wanted to, while we were here, <clears throat> um, give people the opportunity, you know, listen to um, Representative Brennan and give folks um, the opportunity to ask any questions. That's for clarification. <laughs> You're asking for 15 days or 15 business days? <laughs> 15 <laughs> days. 15 days because the process actually can start on a Saturday, um, which is a business day for um, firearms dealers or purchasers in, in many states. And, and, on, and on Sunday uh, is actually a business day in some of the chains. Well, actually, did we hear, wait, did we hear testimony that it really is the next business day. Do you have anything on that? I don't know if I have that. Uh, I mean, hold on. The only testimony I remember yeah. as far as days go was around the FBI. The three days, right? Right. Three days could go to five because the FBI isn't, uh, the, the, even though they're still investigating on the weekends, they don't release, I guess you'd say, release the information till the following Monday. Right. I think. Yeah, no, no, that's, that, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. And I wonder if that's the same yeah. here. That I'm not yeah. certain. I don't know it would be. I, I, did, I did have one thing to share. Yeah. So, you know, I've got, I've, I've got this, uh, you know, one of the reports, it's uh, United States Government Accountability Office. And one of the things in regards to, um, and I, I get this too, uh, business, business days needed for the Federal Bureau of Investigation to determine 90% of uh, National Instant Criminal Background Check Denials. And uh, this is uh, this is a little dated. It's fiscal years 2006 through 2015, but they, they didn't have uh, more, more recent data compiled. And for um, domestic violence offenses, um, it, it took 10 business days uh, for a lot of the deferred ones to come back. And that's just for 90% of them. So, so I will say that, well, you know, I, I understand... Uh, some potential arguments to drop this below uh, 30, I would have real concerns that the 15 days period is going to bump up against uh, 10 business days uh, 
way too often in regards to, to these statistics. And, you know, someone who has a domestic violence conviction and should not get a gun, you know, I would hate to see the gun in, in the hands of an individual like that uh, because 10, uh, 10 business days uh, was too close to, to 15 days period. And again, we're still only talking about 90%, not every case. To get clarification on businesses. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to get yeah, I'd like to get clarification on and maybe maybe Eric can help us with that tomorrow if you know if we're talking business days or not. Um Selena. Yeah, not to get like statistics y, but I mean in the report that you're looking at, Representative Not, um I'm assuming yeah. those that those 10 days are the average length of time. Right. So there's like likely um, some that get cleared up in much shorter period of time between the, the that duration of three and 10 days, but some some that take substantively longer, I would imagine if if so, that was really more of a I guess that was a little commentary, but also a question about just. Yeah, that, that is correct. And, and just for the record, uh, this report is on our page. Um, it was, it was put there under my name, I believe, yesterday. Anybody, any other questions or? If I may, Madam Chair. Sure. I'm I'm thinking on the uh, the 15 days and the in the business day aspect. If you had. I mean, I, unless I'm missing something, if you had um, 10 business days to work with, that would give you a five, the 15 days would actually give you a five day cushion um, and would only encompass uh, the first weekend, I believe. So it would give you, I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. I got a little head cold here going on. So a little fuzzy, but uh well, I, I just say because um, because what we're talking about is only ninety percent of the uh, uh, of the of the cases. You know, I would want to see a cushion in the other end to try and capture that that additional ten percent. So, so I'm thinking it needs a cushion on on the other end. So that's where I'm worried about the drag towards not enough days if we just do days and not business days. So we need a clarification on business days, such as chair grass. Which yeah, we very much do. And so, so again, uh, your amendment is going to say ten or fifteen days. 15? Well, if we were going to go business days, I would. I, I'd like to see this pass. Obviously, that's why I'm here, um, and I, I'm at your mercy. Obviously, so I would. If we were going to go business days, I would like to do ten business days. If we were going to just go days, I would like to do 15. I wasn't aware, to be honest with you, that uh, background checks weren't conducted uh, on the weekend because I, I always thought it was an automated line. I've watched it being done at a dealer before and it's an automated line. And I just, I don't know that it's disconnected during the weekend. I'm not sure. I could check on that. Pat, the reason I said that is, is uh, if I remember right, we heard some testimony that the the three days can actually turn into five if it encompasses the weekend. So, so that's that's why I said that. Um, so okay. I, I was just, because of that testimony, I was under the impression that, that, that something didn't happen on the weekend, I guess, where uh, uh, it, it could be extended into the up to the five days. Could, could I, I could. Just, yeah. Sure. Well, so I'll just note that, you know, so yeah, the, the, the regular background check, and again, 97% of these go, go through. The regular background check, it's all automatic. It, it's like, you know, the people who, who go in on a Saturday, walk out with their gun after going through the process, you know, in, in fairly <coughs> short order. Yeah, they don't turn off the computers. Those background checks are happening on Saturdays, they're happening on Sundays. It's when something gets flagged or something is um, uh, questioned that that's where you need a body in an office <coughs> to check something. And that's where the delay comes, where if the automatic check 
couldn't be completed and you needed a human being to follow up, that's where the, the, the land a weekend or holiday would occur. <clears throat> so my answer to that <clears throat> would be, and I'm, this is just me, I, I'm thinking that if it couldn't be completed, uh, say on a Saturday, then <clears throat> by Monday, uh, I guess I got to back up. If it was, if it was, the call was connected and it was decided that it, it couldn't be uh, okayed on a Friday, say, and it carried into the next week, then there we are where um, it's going to get done in that week, I would assume, one way or the other. And if it didn't, it would be another 10 days from there, uh, which personally I think is, is plenty of time. That make any sense? <laughs> and there's no way you're going to guarantee to capture all of us within that 10 or 15 days anyway. Just or a year. Little... Yeah, I mean, but we're, we're at 97% now, I heard. And uh, I think another another 10, uh, 12 days added on to the, the three is, is going to capture 2.9% of the 3% that's left. That's just a number off the top of my head. No science behind that, but um, just a thought. Yeah. So um, I, I'm curious uh, what you know about the voluntary voluntary appeal uh, file application. It's a BAF application. And as it states uh, actually in this document that the process uh, it allows applicants to request the NICs maintain information about themselves in the VAF to prevent future erroneous denials or extended delays of the transfer of a firearm. So if you have an individual uh, who is, doesn't get cleared in 30 days, if that's what we're talking about, there, there is this other avenue uh, for those diminishing number of people, presumably that when you get to, towards 30 days, uh, for them to, to be able to address this issue. So, I mean, have you heard of that particular uh, approach, uh, Representative Brennan? No, I haven't uh, until today when Representative Knott presented that uh, uh, in his testimony uh, <laughs> during interrogation. But uh, I, from what you just read, I, I think that's something that, correct me if I'm wrong, that may go on file once you are finally okayed after a uh, uh, lengthy delay. Is that the way that reads? Uh, no, it's, a, it, I mean, if you've run, it could be even a situation where even with the three day delay, I, I think that's part of it right now that, you know, if you keep on running into a three day delay and you don't want to have that, here's an opportunity for you to uh, go through this other uh, uh, process so that you don't run into that every time you try to get a firearm. Presumably the same thing would apply if it's 15 days, 30 days or whatnot. I'm just saying that it's not an endless loop necessarily if, if it's 30 days. If it's 30 days, yeah, you have, one has to reapply is my understanding as well. The few people that presumably are there at 30 days, uh, but then there's this other way to, to prevent that from happening again. Uh, so I'm just wondering, it, it doesn't sound like that's something you're as familiar with, but. I, I'm not, and um, <clears throat> I, I see where it may come in helpful for anybody who's run into obstacles uh, in the past, but I don't think, I really don't uh, think that it affects this, my amendment at all, in, in the fact that it's, it's intended for people who consistently run into issues. Um, I think if I had to wait 30 days on a purchase, I may uh, hopefully be made aware of that by my uh, local firearms dealer, but uh, I have never heard of that in the past. And I, I still, I think for first time buyers and, and, and so forth with no criminal record and just a, a snag in the system, um, if we can't figure out in 15 days, if this person is, uh, is approvable, then, then something's wrong with the system. A lot of, I said earlier, a lot of the system issues are, are reporting issues with uh, state agencies. A lot of domestic violence, uh, 
uh, offenses are not reported to the NICS background check. They're recorded, but um, they still, in my, if you guys know more about this than I do, but I think they still have to be reported. So yeah, that's a, that's a great tool, um, but I don't think it affects um, my amendment at all. Oh, thank you. Not, I'm all set. <clears throat> okay, well, thank you, Pat. So, committee, You're welcome. This is, sorry, um, we're on the floor at 9.30, so we should probably some Zoom whatever, what, 9, 9.15, so we could, so we can look at your, like, oh, well, <laughs> so we can look at, um, <laughs> basically, we need to see it, you know, it'll be in the calendar, and that way we need to, uh, discuss it and vote whether or not to um, consider it friendly um, or not. So what do people think? And if you want to... Oh, okay, so you're not, so you, um, when are you... I'll be Zooming in. Okay, and you're available, are you available like... Yes, yes, definitely. We do it nine o'clock. <laughs> I, I say, Philip, let's do it nine, so we okay. have a little time to work for. Yeah. All right, so yeah, so nine o'clock, please. So we'll reserve right. discussion until tomorrow. I take it when we. Well, um, yeah, and we should let we should let Representative Brennan know that. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, we're still we're still live. We're still yeah, we're still discuss, have to have to have If you want to discuss, go you know, go ahead. Um, we're currently discussing this now. I just want to know. Oh, we're not going to vote. Get a copy of that. It can't be posted or. Yeah, it's posted. Is it posted? Yeah, it's posted. Where'd that come from? I just, just read the blue here. Uh, it's it's from the FBI. Uh, I just found it online. I, I'd heard of this process before. It never came up in the past couple. So it's on our on our mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, I guess, I mean I just want to kind of make the decision points really really clear on this that that the thirty days certainly. Um, it's closing, very much closing that loop. Going to uh, any number below that is is just delaying. And there are going to be people who are prohibited persons who are going to get their firearms because you haven't resolved even that data. The data that uh, I know Will had uh, cited to it that's also on the on the system uh, a GAO report uh, from 2016, but that covered a period of 2000. Six to 2015, something like that. And it, what they found is in, in the, the main offense or the main prohibiting factor that extended beyond three days was uh, domestic violence misdemeanors. And my understanding is part of the reason for that, and you, you don't pick that up from this, but it's from previous testimony, that it's not always clear in the police <coughs> records that a particular charge or offense was domestic violence related. It could be just assault. And they actually have to see the charge and such to see that it was domestic assault and therefore a misdemeanor that leads to somebody being prohibited. In any event, it said that there were 70% of those kind of denials uh, were resolved uh, within the three days, either immediately or within three days, and then an additional 10 days for 90%. But that doesn't say, you know, you still have 10% of whatever denials that they eventually get aren't resolved. Uh, you know, and that's a sig potentially significant number. That, that's one point. The other point is that uh, since, the, since the COVID pandemic, the, the number of uh, requests, the number of background checks that skyrocketed. And also my understanding, I read somewhere, and unfortunately I don't have anything, in, but I can try to find something show this, that the number of firearms that are turned over after three days is, has gone up significantly as well, probably because the FBI is overwhelmed. So again, I'm, I'm very concerned about going to any number below 30 days. I would completely understand it if there wasn't this other process that may be a little bit more arduous for those few people who actually get to that 30 days uh, in, in Vermont, that there is this <coughs> alternative path that one can take to try to essentially clear the record or make it very clear. 
uh, so they don't run into that delay again. So, so it is just really, it is closing the loophole or delaying it and, and you know, halfway shutting the door. It's kind of how I see that. So I just want to throw that out there, my perspective on this. And I'm not sure where I am on all this. I, I'm glad we have overnight to think about it, but. Um, Lena. Yeah, I was just going to add to Martin's recollection of past testimony. My recollection is similar that um, that in those domestic violence cases that couldn't be resolved in three days, it, it is has to do with both what the reasons Martin stated, but also I think we heard at one point like variation in state law. So they're really sort of parsing out how things map to the federal prohibition from the state level and that that can take a little bit of time because there is variation from state to state. So I just wanted to throw that in the mix. And um, I guess I would say I'm, I'm concerned about shortening the number because, you know, it's not like 10 days is some magical set number that these things get resolved by. It's just that you take people's experience of five days and seven days and 12 days and 14 days and 15 days and two days and you add them all together and then you average them and the average is 10 or, or maybe it's a median, but um, it still means there's a lot of people for whom it's taking longer. And so I like where we've settled on the 30 days because I think it leaves a good buffer for, for that as a safety net, net for folks without, you know, just extending it forever. I think we've, we've settled on a place of some moderation, but that still has a, a good, a good buffer of protection for folks. So, um, you know, happy to think about it over tonight, overnight as well, but that's that's where I am at present. Thank you. Barbara, I think you're, <laughs> yes, go ahead. So uh, very similar to Representative Coburn, it does seem like if we're gonna amend the bill, we don't want to create the Vermont loophole, which would just replace the Charleston loophole. So. 30 days seems to be a good catch all. And I, I just would hate for us to do this and not um, fix the problem. So, so I guess I'm, I will sleep on it, but you know, and would love any other research or evidence or data, but I'm hesitant to support this. Thank you. Yeah. yeah um, this clarification from Will, so many numbers, days and everything get thrown around. So we've got the three day waiting period and you, you talked of, I think you, it was said that within 10 days, 90% of the um, questionable uh, firearms getting issued are, are issued in that 10 days. Is, is that right? So here's the, so figure, Six business days needed for the Federal Bureau of Investigation to determine 90% of national incident criminal background check denials at this 2006-2015. And so for this one, for misdemeanor crimes of domestic violence, it was, you know, it was uh, to catch 90 of them, determine 90 of them, it was, it was 10 days. 10 days total. And it says uh, business days, sorry. And right, yeah, 10, ten yeah, business right, days. 10 business days, but it's not the three days plus the 10 days. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, is there any other is information like on 15 days? Uh, not, not in this. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, well, thank you. So we will adjourn and we'll be back here 